So with iOS 14.3, Apple's releasing its new feature called Apple ProRAW. So in today's video, I'm going to explain to you exactly what it is, what are the upsides and downsides of using it. And if you stick around until the end of the video, we'll take a look at some sample photos taken with and without using Apple ProRAW. So first of all, what is Apple ProRAW? To understand this, you need to understand compressed and uncompressed file formats when it comes to photography. Well, Apple ProRAW is an uncompressed file format that combines the flexibility of shooting RAW with Apple's computational photography. So what does this mean? To better understand this, you need to understand compressed and uncompressed file formats when it comes to photography. So you can have your compressed file formats, for example, a JPEG image, or you can have an uncompressed file format that we call a RAW file. And that could be, for example, a DNG file, but different camera manufacturers have their own file formats for their RAW files. So think about compressed and uncompressed file formats sort of as uh, a pie. A compressed file format is pretty much like buying a frozen pie. You get back home, you reheat it, you get what you paid for. Yeah, you could add a little bit of topping on top, but there's really not that much you can do with it. An uncompressed file format is more like being involved in the making of the pie. So you can pick and choose which ingredients and how much of these ingredients you're going to have in your pie. So when you're shooting in RAW, you have a lot of flexibility in post-production when you're editing your photos. Now, Apple ProRAW is exactly this, but it's combined with Apple's Diffusion and Smart HDR and all of Apple's computational photography. So in theory, that's awesome. On top of all of that, Apple's claiming that you're going to get 14 stops of dynamic range, which is awesome for a phone camera. For example, I'm shooting this video on a Sony a7 III, which is a $2,000 camera only for the body and when taking photos it has 14.7 stops of dynamic range so 14 stops of dynamic range for a phone that's awesome so this means when you're shooting photos in contrasty places you're going to retain a lot of information in the highlights and also in the shadows and also you're getting 12 bit color which is awesome all right so now that you understand what apple pro raw actually does uh, what are the upsides and downsides of using it and how to actually use it? Well, first of all, to use it, you need to be running iOS 14.3. From there, to enable Apple ProRAW, you need to go to Settings, uh, Camera Settings, Format, and then just enable Apple ProRAW. So now, every time when you open your camera app, you'll see a bubble in the top right corner of your screen. So by default it's turned off, but if you want to take raw photos, just tap on it and you're good to go. Now you can capture Apple's Pro RAW photos with all three cameras and also when you're shooting in night mode. Now you can't shoot raw while live photos are enabled and you can't shoot raw in burst mode. You can barely see it, but it's switching on and off as soon as you start burst shooting. All right, so all of this aside, what are the drawbacks of shooting an Apple Pro RAW, if any? Well, there are a few drawbacks. And the first one is Apple ProRAW is only available on the Apple 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. So here's the thing, to capture ProRAW photos you need a lot of processing power. So you need a phone with the Apple's A14 processor. Now I'm not sure if this feature is going to be available for the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 mini, even though both of these phones are rocking the A14 processor. But to me it seems like this is going to be a push from Apple for people to upgrade to the iPhone 12 or the 12 Pro Max. Now the second drawback is file size. So taking regular photos, each photo takes about two to three megabytes of space. Now when you're taking Apple's ProRAW photos, they're 10 times bigger. So one photo is about 25 megabytes. Now that's not huge when it comes to uncompressed photos. You know, professional cameras can easily exceed 60, 70 megabytes per photo. But still 25 megabytes per photo is a lot given that you're going to save these photos in your phone for a long time. So definitely shoot ProRAW only if you're planning to really edit your photos. Now the third downside, which is probably the biggest downside at the moment, is compatibility. You see, Apple's ProRAW format is not really like a regular RAW file. And I'll explain that more in depth when we're looking at the photos, but the thing is, because Apple's ProRAW format includes also Apple's computational photography's information, you need apps that can support that. And at this point, there's not a lot of applications, at least that I'm aware of, 
that are fully supporting this format. Now don't get me wrong, you can still edit these photos as regular RAW files, but you're losing all of the Apple's computational photography side of it if you're doing so. Now the good part is that third party apps will be able to fully support Apple Pro Raw in the future if they choose to do so. So anyways, to better show you what I'm talking about, let's hop on the computer and let's take a look at some photos. All right, so we're in Lightroom and let me show you what I was talking about. So here we have two photos. One was taken with Apple Pro Raw, the other one was just a regular JPEG. Well, not JPEG, but Apple's high efficiency image format or whatever. And you can see that when you open it up in Lightroom, the photos don't look the same. You can clearly see that the regular photo contains all of Apple's computational photography, so it's a lot brighter. You have more photos combined, Apple's deep fusion, whatever, all of the buzzwords. But you can see that the Apple's computational photography algorithms are working to give you the best possible photos. Now, when you take a look at the raw photo, there's none of that. This is the compatibility uh, issue at the moment that I was talking about. You need to have specific apps that can fully support Apple's Pro RAW format. Now this photo is still a DNG file, it's still a RAW photo, you can still edit it as a RAW photo, but you're losing all of the Apple's computational photography's stuff and information that comes along with Apple's Pro RAW format. And also keep in mind when I'm viewing these photos on my phone, they look exactly the same. So it's only when you open up the photo with a app that doesn't fully support it that it looks like this. So now you might be wondering how do you edit these photos? Well the best way actually to edit the photos is just simply with your phone. Just open up your photos, don't use any apps, just open up the photos and pick the photo that you want to edit. Uh, raw photos will have a small raw label on the top left corner on the screen and then just tap on edit and you can fully edit the photos with Apple's computational photography supported. So to my knowledge, the best way to edit these raw photos at the moment is just through the Photos app and just tapping edit on the photos that you want to edit. So now that we know that, let's take a look at what are the differences when it comes to editing an Apple's Pro Raw photo and just a regular compressed photo. And I'm going to be doing all of the editing on the phone. All right, so here we have two photos of an old Russian camera. Now this is how the photos look unedited and this is how both the photos look when I apply the same exact edit on them. So what I did in this edit for both photos was plus 50 exposure, uh, minus 50 highlights, plus 50 shadows, plus 80 contrast, plus 30 black point, plus 30 vibrance, with plus 50 uh, color temperature. Same exact settings on both of these photos and as we can see one of the photos is starting to fall apart, the second one not really. And this is what RAW format gives you. You can have a lot more flexibility, you can do a lot harsher edit on your photos if you choose to do so. So if we zoom in on the lens and on the camera you can see that there's not a lot of details on the camera, on the camera's grip, around the lens, it's just, it's just black, it's dark, there's no detail in there. But if we're looking at the raw photo, we can still clearly see the texture of the camera, the texture of the lens, uh, the details are retained, and this photo is completely usable. It's, it's completely fine. Now, I'm not editing these photos, you know, for Instagram or whatever, so don't mind it, it it's just edited so, you, you know, I can show you the differences between Apple Pro Raw and a regular compressed file format. So anyways, I'm excited to see what the future brings and what third-party apps can come up with when it comes to supporting this file format and what features they will bring to the table when it comes to editing these photos because Apple's computational photography it contains a lot of information. I would guess that it could contain also the information about the depth of the photo because we do have the LiDAR sensor on the cameras so I could imagine that you could enable portrait mode after taking the photo. I'm just speculating right now but I'm really excited to see what the editing capabilities of Apple's Pro Raw format will be in the future. As of now, yes, it's cool to use and you can edit your photos in the Photos app and that's really cool and useful but we'll definitely be able to do a lot more stuff with these photos in the future when, you know, other apps will fully support this file format. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I hope I did a good job explaining to you what it is and I would love to hear from you guys what are your opinions on Apple's Pro Raw 
file format are you shooting with an iPhone or are you shooting with an Android just let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video